Okay, so this is going to be a pretty interesting video. So you all know the Apple Watch Series 3, right? The new 2017 Apple Watch, this one is actually LTE enabled. So this means that you can make a phone call directly from your watch without the need to have your phone with you. You get notifications from all of your favorite apps, again, without the need to have a phone near you. You can stream Apple Music and so, so much more. Now, I've actually done an in-depth review of the Apple Watch Series 3 with LTE, but it turns out that there is this one feature that I haven't really talked about in my review that's so unique and so important that at some point it might even change smartphones, yes, smartphones, not smartwatches, forever. So something that's really exciting and really interesting. And here's everything you need to know about this one interesting feature. So grab some, grab some popcorn or milk or whatever you want to grab and enjoy. Okay, so if you get the Apple Watch Series 3 with LTE, when you set it up for the first time, if your iPhone is on a supported carrier in your country, and these are, by the way, all the supported carriers at the moment in all the countries, uh, you can actually have the same phone number and a cellular connection on your Apple Watch. So that's, that, that's the feature. But wait, wait, Daniel, this doesn't seem special or secret at all. I mean, we, we all knew this, that, you know, the Apple Watch Series 3 had LTE connection and you, had, you also had the same phone number as on your iPhone. Well, what's really interesting here is that you never have to insert a SIM card into your Apple Watch at all. Instead, it uses something called eSIM or an electronic SIM. Okay, so what's, what's an eSIM? What's an electronic SIM? Well, if you live in the US, for example, and you use Sprint or Verizon, you might have a CDMA smartphone. So a smartphone with no SIM card, but one that actually has a phone number registered automatically by the carrier. And if you need to change your phone, uh, then you need your carrier's permission. Now, most of the world actually uses GSM networks, which actually rely on a SIM card that your carrier provides you with. And then you insert that SIM card into your, I don't know, whichever smartphone you wish. So that's how it works on smartphones. But on the Apple Watch Series 3, this one actually comes with an electronic SIM. So the difference here is that instead of your carrier keeping you, uh, keeping you in a leash, so to say, uh, with an eSIM, you can actually switch carriers whenever you wish from the device's menu. It's as simple as that. So you don't have to insert a physical SIM card and you can switch networks from the supported ones at least whenever you wish from the device's menu, which all sounds awesome and really, really useful. And it actually is, but the Apple Watch Series 3 isn't Apple's only device, by the way, that comes with an eSIM. So you also get this on the iPads. So iPad models, LT enabled iPad models, of course, uh, such as the iPad mini 3, the iPad mini 4, the iPad Air 2 and newer, they all come with an Apple SIM. So that's a physical SIM, by the way, that's actually programmable and it's not stuck to a specific network. And then the iPad Pros 2016 and 2017 both come, all four actually come with an embedded Apple SIM or an electronic SIM. And again, you can switch carriers from the settings menu uh, whenever you wish. Now, I know all of this sounds really boring and useless, but as a matter of fact, this thing actually has two very useful applications. So the first one, obviously you're not stuck to a specific network. So you can change data plans or pay as you go plans whenever you wish. Uh, and then number two, this is actually the main one. So a device with an electronic SIM is essentially theft proof. In a lot of ways. Okay, so to add a bit more detail to this, uh, about three years ago, I had a fairly unfortunate experience. So I was mugged. Uh, I was, long story short, I was threatened by two guys uh, who ended up taking my phone. It, it happened in the middle of the day. Uh, I had an iPhone 5S at the time, and it was a pretty bad experience because I was a student and the iPhone 5S was my first iPhone purchase with my own money. So it was a pretty significant, I don't know, uh, had a personal touch to, to it, so to say. Anyway. Uh, I, I tried locating my iPhone with find my iPhone, but nothing showed up. And even now, by the way, I'm still trying to locate my iPhone 5S, but even after three years, it hasn't appeared on my find my iPhone app ever, which is pretty surprising. So usually when you try and locate a device through find my iPhone or find my Android or Prey or whatever tracking method you use, uh, it means that the device, if, if nothing shows up, it basically means that the device is not connected to the internet. So either it's not near a known Wi-Fi network or it doesn't even have a cellular connection because, well, the SIM card was removed. And that's what most thieves do. They steal your phone and they remove your SIM card straight away. And then, you know, they sell it to someone who is not that familiar with smartphones. Now, the iPhone 5S, my iPhone 5S at the time actually had activation lock enabled. So the thieves couldn't or at least they shouldn't have been able to access all of my data. But the phone was, you know, still lost. 
and since they removed the SIM card straight away, it was untrackable to this day, like three years later. So I don't think I'll ever know what really happened to my phone. However, a way to actually solve this would be an electronic SIM. So since there's no physical SIM card that you know you can remove, the phone will always be connected to a cellular network. And unless that person has access to you know your phone's home screen, uh, so he can turn on airplane mode or disable the cellular network, it would actually be impossible to steal someone's smartphone and the owner not being able to locate their phone. Now, the iPhone X was actually rumored to come with an eSIM or electronic SIM, which by the way was one of my most awaited features, obviously but never actually happened. So we still have a physical SIM with the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus as well. But at some point in the near future, this will definitely change. So two to three years down the line, I would say I can definitely see a lot of smartphones with an embedded eSIM. That would not only make it more convenient and much easier for you to you know, switch networks, but it would also bring down smartphone thefts by a lot. But let me know in the comments what you guys think about all this. And also, have you ever had your smartphone stolen? Or do you know anyone who had their smartphone stolen? And if so, in what circumstances? I would actually love to hear your comments on all that, so leave a comment if that's the case, I would love to read those. But yeah, in the ads, feel free to subscribe if you want to see more interesting videos like this one, and also enable notifications so that you're notified whenever a new interesting video comes out. I've done two interesting videos that are pretty similar to this one, so MacBook Pro, five things that Apple has never mentioned, uh, and then also iPhone X or iPhone 10, the feature that Apple never talked about. So similar videos to this one, check them out if you're interested in seeing something similar. But yeah, other than that, feel free to give us a like if you've enjoyed it, to let me know, and this has been pretty much it. So thank you for watching, I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Zone of Tech, signing out. Cheers.